What up, African world? It's Home Team here, and I'm back at it with my series, A Closer Look. And today, we're gonna take a closer look at the Amhara people of Ethiopia. And as always, if you want access to sources, courses, and exclusive videos, you can do so on Patreon.com. Also, Go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can find unique, illustrative infographics summarizing African history. All the basic information you need is neatly compiled for you there. It's a really good resource and introduction to African history for beginners. The link to Patreon and Afrographics is in the description box below. The Amhara are one of the two largest ethnic groups in Ethiopia, occupying largely central and western Ethiopia and parts of the north. The Amhara culture has dominated Ethiopian history in general. All but one of Ethiopia's emperors were Amhara. The Ethiopian states that the Amhara inhabit include Wolo, Gojam, Gondor, and North Showa. In general, the Amhara people typically think of themselves in terms of their regions, rather than a distinct ethnic group. The Amhara culture was so prevalent that it's been seen as being synonymous with the Ethiopian state as a whole. They've also historically been called Abyssinians, and they built one of the most popular and long-lasting empires in all of African history. I created an infographic summing up the history of the Abyssinian Empire. I'll leave a link for you in the description box below, as this video will be just too long to include both histories. Some scholars claim that the ancestors of the Amhara came from southern Arabia and intermarried with a local African population in the Wolo area. From there, it's believed that the Amharic language and culture spread. Gez, the language of Aksum, is the foundation of the Amharic language and writing system, the Gez script. The Amhara themselves claim that the first Ethiopian kingdom was established by Menelik I, who was the son of the Queen of Sheba and the Judean king Solomon of the Christian Bible. The Amhara call her Queen Makeda. She's also frequently described as the Queen of the South in the Kebra Nagast, a written account of the epic around the 14th century. This queen of the south was very beautiful in face, and her stature was superb. Her understanding and intelligence, which God had given her, were of such high character that she went to Jerusalem to hear the wisdom of Solomon. The Cabernet Gas documents the oral epic of the Amhara concerning the romantic relationship between Queen Makeda and King Solomon. The Amharas even claim that the legendary Ark of the Covenant was brought from Jerusalem to Ethiopia. Orthodox Christianity amongst the Amhara was adopted at least to around the 4th century via the Aksumite dynasty. Christianity itself remains the core of Amhara culture. Many people don't know that there was a huge struggle between Islam and Christianity in Ethiopia. The back and forth battles between the two groups determined the fate of the entire region itself. The influx of Islam brought in a holy war against Christianity in Ethiopia. Even though the Muslims gained an initial stronghold, the Amhara Christians pushed back with some help from the Portuguese and reconquered Ethiopia for the Christian faith. This success is the reason why many Amharas are Christians today. The Christian religion remains a big cultural landmark in Ethiopia. One of the grandest structures exemplifying Christian vigor in the region are the churches in Lalabella. The church is no doubt has one of the most unique architectural styles in the world. The 19th century brought about the expansion of the Amhara political dominance as the region was brought under imperial Amhara control. From the north, foreign invasion from the Ottomans of Egypt and Mahdists of Sudan were fought off, and the Italian advance into Ethiopia was famously stopped by the Ethiopian army of Menelik II at the Battle of Adwa. This allowed the Amharic Empire to be free from colonial rule while the rest of Africa was being swallowed up. Amhara painting is the dominant art form in modern day Ethiopia and is largely done in the context of their Christian faith. One of the most distinguished features of Amharic art is the large eyes of the subjects who are usually depicted as biblical figures. The architecture of the Amhara is also quite impressive. The Amhara castles have become such a distinguished asset for Ethiopian history as a whole. These castles in the capital city of Gundar served as a residence of the emperor largely in the 17th century. The Amhara were so dominant that other ethnic groups in Ethiopia began to feel a little too much pressure from the 
um, horrorization, if you will, of Ethiopia. This brought about a lot of tension and unrest in the 20th century. Despite all of this, the legacy of the Amhara is undoubtedly one of the greatest in all of Africa. Well, I'm all out, guys. Don't forget to go to Afrographics.com to see illustrative infographics on the Amhara Empire of Abyssinia. All the information you need is gathered there for you, including some source material. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.